In this video, I'm going to show you how I paint the Eidolon of Mathlan water cape for the aspect of sea in my case, although it worked for the aspect of storm as well. That's for the Eidneth Deepkin uh, faction for Age of Sigmar. It's a very cool model, but a little intimidating. Took me a while to get around to painting it because of that. But I think I'm pretty happy with how this has turned out, and I'm going to share that with you. Let's get started. Hey guys, real quick, Jared here. Um, this is the model in question. It's really, really cool. Kind of expensive, so we should make sure we actually get him painted and added to the Agneth uh, army that we're doing, that I'm doing. Um, I had to use airbrush for this guy to do some of the blends that, that result in that nice gradient from the dark water to the light water. Um, so if you don't have an airbrush, this could be more challenging. And I really struggled with how to paint that water and make it look really pretty and gorgeous because it is it's an amazing sculpt and I was really intimidated by it. But I think in the end, I'm pretty happy with it. I super said that during the intro, so I'm totally repeating myself, which means we should probably start painting. But before we start painting, if you're interested in the hobby of war game miniatures, board game miniatures, and just painting these things, consider subscribing and clicking the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything. Here's a look at the cloak uh, when I was sort of in the middle of painting this model. And then here's a look at the finished Eidolon model with this cape. Because I was going to be going for a very dark water all the way down to basically white foam, I decided to do my primer that way. So I've primed black from the top to about halfway down the cape. And then from the midpoint uh, down to all the way down to the bottom part of the foam, I'm using Vallejo Premium White Airbrush Primer, uh, you know, and sort of trying to blend that into the black part that ends about halfway down. Starting things off, I used Vallejo Air uh, Imperial Blue and I applied that to the small front parts of the cape as well as the back and top down to about a quarter of the way down. Next I used uh, P3 Meridius Blue with some uh, Vallejo Airbrush Flow Improver and you can see that I'm blending that blue between the, well, mostly at the end of that imperial blue and sort of trying to overlap it a bit. And you can see as it gets to the white primer that I overlapped, it, it automatically starts to lighten. By the way, I don't know why I assembled it this way before painting it. And yes, it was harder to get at the inner, you know, the inside of the cloak behind his body there. Next, I airbrushed Vallejo Game Air Ultramarine Blue and I airbrushed it as a light highlight across you know the the raised surfaces of the cloak uh, over the imperial blue areas and also sort of blending into that meridius blue so you can see that with each step i'm trying to use the airbrush to blend between one blue and another or even the other one blue and the white at the bottom Now going even lighter blue uh, as we get towards the white, um, I used P3 Arcane Blue with again some uh, Vallejo Airbrush Flow Improver. And I'm just doing it between the Meridius Blue and the white. And it's not going to show very strong I wouldn't say because um, the white undercoat or the white primer has already caused the Meridius Blue to get pretty light as it is. But this creates a nice bridge between those two colors. I really wanted to get some of that rich, um, dark turquoise look that I think the official model has. And so I took some P3 turquoise ink and used it in my airbrush. And I'm showing you that only because I don't know if it really did anything at all. I was sort of trying to create a turquoise filter for a lot of the water and pretty much you could just skip this skip step because I don't think it did a whole lot for me. Thank you. 
At this point, the white at the bottom had started, started to get probably some blue on parts of it and whatnot, and was probably, I would say it wasn't turning white early enough, so I grabbed that white primer, which is just really, really good white airbrush paint, basically, and I was using it to restore some of the brightness to the white at the bottom, and again, to blend it up into that arcane blue. And if you look carefully, you can notice that if you've built this model before, I missed an entire chunk of white foam when I uh, assembled it and it's so subtle I actually didn't realize it for a while but I believe I fixed it later on because my final model does have it. Similar sort of trick to when I used the turquoise ink I grabbed um, some Badger Minotaur um, ghost tint and I was using the plasma fluid here and again just trying to do some interesting creative you know filters or glazes to kind of add some richness to the blues, a little bit of tonal variety. I don't even know if it worked either. I was really feeling my way through this thing because it was quite challenging to paint and thank God I have an airbrush because I think it'd be very difficult to do with a regular brush. Speaking of regular brushes though, you pretty much have to use one for the next step, uh, which is to painstakingly paint in all of those ripples in the water as it's cascading down. I mean, that's pretty much a big part of what makes this cape look so, or cloak, whatever it is, it makes it look so cool, is how you've got the dark going to light of the main body of it, and then you've got the lighter, foamy, ripply looking stuff that starts up high and also gets bright, but, but um, much faster. Anyway, you can see it for yourself in the video, but you, yeah, you have to pretty much hand paint this carefully, take your time. Try not to, um, you know, go go outside the line, so to speak. And if you do, you're just going to need to take some dark blue and fix that up. You want to make, make sure you've got really nice, crisp lines on this stuff to make it look great. And I'm using um, just Arcane, uh, P3 Arcane Blue, but of course starting up higher on the cape. bit more of a close-up here, and what I'm doing is... I've now added probably I'd say 50% um, white to that and I'm starting to you know blend the um, arcane blue into white sort of halfway through each of those ripples as it gets as it heads down you know down towards the bottom and eventually to almost pure white as you get to the lowest ones which is essentially what I'm doing here with Morrow white I think I also um, dry brush it in fact yeah that's basically what I'm about to do I dry brushed it as well um, on some of the parts because it's very because of the shape of the that foam at the bottom and all the holes and spaces and, and jaggedness of it I found that just very challenging to paint with a regular brush in a regular way so I was a little rough and just kind of tried to to put it all over the place with the dry brush uh, and then, but of course, using a normal brush um, as you got up into the more defined ripples that were sculpted on. It's really hard to describe this cape, by the way, um, just because it's such a unique piece of work. Now, at the very top where it joins his body, it is effectively still a regular cloak and hasn't turned into water, so to speak. So I just highlight that much in a very you know, traditional way, in my case, adding white to the Imperial Blue um, Vallejo airbrush paint and just, you know, the thinning it a little bit so it flows nicely and just building those highlights up on the raised ridges of each of those, um, you know, the folds in the cape and progressively adding a little more white. I think I probably did like three highlights. And of course you do those highlights um, on the back of the cape as well at the top where you can see all the folds and on the inside is much as you can reach if you've built it the way I have. Here I'm including another look at um, another layer step where I'm highlighting with having added more white to the Imperial Blue mix. Um, you know, you can, I won't spend too much time on this as it's pretty straightforward. Now at the top where it still is cape or cloak, there is trim. That's kind of a wavy shaped trim. And I paint that on um, with some 
um, Vallejo Electric Blue, which I think I should have thinned more just looking at my brush in the video, but anyway, that's what I used. It's very nice and opaque though, and it goes on very smooth. And um, I'm ultimately gonna highlight that by just adding white for a few layers. And then what I do here is I take the Imperial Blue and a fine brush and I just go back and clean up anywhere that any of these highlights or like that last stage with the electric blue, anywhere that I'm getting it onto the part of the cloak I shouldn't be, I just tidy that up and that's a big part of what'll make the final job look good. Then I thought I'd get a little creative and try glossing it as it got more watery toward the bottom. So I'm kind of glossing this guy from halfway up and down into the foam probably getting a little too artsy for my own good and I don't actually know if it shows up a whole lot when you're looking at the final model in person but what the heck I was experimenting and trying to do something interesting with this guy here's a look at the final water cloak slash cape having been painted and before I finish the entire model And here's how it looks when the model is completed uh, and the missing piece of foam I never assembled the first time has been added and painted white so it blends in nicely. Really love this model. I think it looks totally cool. And I really like having it as one of the centerpieces for my Aydna Thiepkin army. Just, man, he's too big to even photograph against my background. As you can see, it's a very impressive model and I hope you uh, like how it turned out. That's it for this guy. I hope you found this interesting and it was quite an experiment for me. Um, if you did, I hope you'll subscribe and consider liking and sharing the video. Follow me on social media for whip and other ongoing commentary. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.